team in City at all. The reason that we came to this airport way too early was because we had a plan. I have the Amex Business Platinum Card, and with that comes a free Priority Pass membership, which gives us access to a lot of lounges around the world. And there are two of them here at the Ho Chi Minh City Airport that we wanted to visit. However, as we have come across with a couple of airlines in this part of the world, it turns out that even if you already have your tickets and all of that kind of stuff, you are not allowed to check in until three hours before your flight is expected to depart. And despite having come across this, I think twice before, as you said, in Asia, we still keep trying. So we actually got here, I'd say six and a half hours before our flight, hoping that we could just get our boarding passes and go on through. But we were foiled once again. Yep. So we are now having to spend a solid four hours just whiling away the time until we can officially check in. At that point, we will finally be able to go through security and into probably just one of the lounges that we were expected to. But it's not as bad as it could be because we do have free Wi-Fi out here and despite the fact that we didn't want to spend any money on food, we were able to find, well, a small snack for me, a small meal for Nick at one of the overpriced establishments outside of security. And considering it was overpriced, it could have been a lot less. So we'll take it. We have about another hour and a half to wait at this point until we can check in. So I'm going to watch some YouTube videos. I'm gonna figure out some way to pass the time. But we will see you in a lounge. <laughs> so there's been a little bit of a change of plan. We were gonna use our priority passes to get into a lounge, but then when we checked in, we were offered access to the business class five star lounge. So we thought, let's check that out instead. If you can't tell by now, we are traveling business class today. And how did we afford that on a backpacker's budget? That was by saving up a lot of credit card points and putting those towards this flight. This flight is gonna be taking us from Ho Chi Minh City to Singapore and onwards to our final destination, which is a further eight hour flight away. The total cost in terms of points for both Nick and myself was 90,000 points on Aeroplan plus 210 Canadian dollars. That actually works out to be five cents per point because the total cost of an actual cash ticket is about $2,400 each, so $4,800. The travel hacking math is pretty simple. Once you know the formula, you basically take the total cost of our flight, which is $4,800, you subtract $210 and then you divide by the points, which in our case is 90,000, and that's how we get five cents per point, which is an excellent reduction value. And because we're in an all new lounge, it means an all new lounge rating. Hopefully this whole lounge rating thing is becoming famous by now. I guess we'll find out. 
but this one is for La Saigonais Lounge in Ho Chi Minh City yeah, on the International Terminal. There is quite a good selection of food in this lounge. The only place that this is let down is the fact that they don't really have much of a dessert selection. And also, while the hot food tastes amazing, it's kind of lukewarm. So with that, we're giving it a seven. Drinks wise, there is a plethora of non-alcoholic options, as well as two different types of beer, not even just two different breweries, but you had a blonde and a red, which is very, very nice. And then on top of that, you had a few varieties of wine and a few top shelf alcohol options. So with that, we're gonna give this one an eight. As per usual, there's not much to say about cleanliness. They come around regularly and clear up after you. So with that, we're giving it a nine. On the comfort front, plethora of different seating options. It's very spacious in here. I guess that's also owing to the fact that this is a business class lounge. So there's just fewer people. But all in all, the fact that you have this and a great view of the runway as well means that we're giving this one an eight. The amenities in this lounge are pretty bog standard. You have charging ports, you have Wi-Fi, you have showers. What sets this one a little bit apart is that there are computers and printers for use as well as a massage chair. So we're giving it an eight. This gives us a grand total of 40, which pushes this outside of our real top, top lounges. But it's definitely better than most of your mid-ranges that we go for. We have a separate entrance. Before I've even sat down, I can clearly see a pillow and a blanket, a couple of outlets, and some headphones. Amazing. Just been given a hot towel. I don't know if you're supposed to use it for your face or your hands, but I'm going to use it for everything. You guys, look at the size of this TV. Here is the footrest. You can see very clearly that there is even room for someone my size here. And then here underneath is a compartment for like your stuff and I've just shoved my little belt bag in here. There's even a little coat hanger here. There's a mirror here. Hi. You can use the touch screen function on this gigantic screen or alternatively if you would much rather not even extend that far then you do also have this amazing little remote which is just connected into this little port right here. Thank you so much. Cheers Bubs. I think this is like passion fruit and champagne. Oh. Really good. I have 24 minutes left in Barbie, so I will continue that on our next flight. Meanwhile, I just finished the Super Mario Bros. movie, and you know, my nerdy little heart very, very happy indeed. My favorite part of that meal, by the way, was the seafood salad. I don't know why, but the combination of dragon fruit, tomato, and then like the shrimp and scallops with this like tangy but spicy chili sauce was so good. It just worked. It's amazing. We are going to try and see if we can get into the Singapore Airlines Business Lounge. We only have an hour and 50 minutes until our next flight, so it is going to be tight. Fingers crossed we can at least get a coffee. Good to be back, only temporarily. Okay, babe. Gate A4. Okay, remember, pieces of paper. Pieces of paper.
how are you even going to choose what to have? With immense difficulty. Like, I want all the sushi. I also want, like, tons of the hot food. I, I'm seeing everything, and I want it all. Everything. And yet we're going to get fed on the next flight, too. You make that sound like it's a problem. It turns out that they have Asahi Super Dry on tap. Like literally, you just put the glass in, you press a button, it just pours you a pint. It's amazing. For any whiskey lover out there, this is the Ardmore Triple Wood Heated Whiskey. I love anything that has multiple woods in their casks to make the whiskey, so I'm very, very excited about this one. Cheers. So cheers. This Sauvignon Blanc is really smooth. This is beautiful stuff. Up there with some of the best I've tried. We are in the Silver Chris Lounge in Terminal 3 in Singapore, which is essentially the Singapore Airlines Business Class Lounge. We start off as ever with food and I'm sure you've seen from the footage but this is probably the most comprehensive selection of food that we have ever seen in any lounge before. It caters to any time of day, any diet type and the actual quality that you get on your plate is second to none. It is absolutely amazing. For this reason, we are going to be rating this, the big one, it's a 10. As far as drinks go, they have all the juice, water, and pop you want, and it's all self-serve and to-go because it's in cans and bottles, which I love. In terms of wine, there are six different options, and it's all self-serve. Same with the beer. You can just put the glass underneath the dispenser, and it serves you. They also have champagne that you can serve yourself, and they have some top-shelf liquor. This could not get better unless they also made cocktails for you. However, unlike the other lounge where we gave it a same rating, this one's dispensers are really cool, which the other one didn't have, and this has better wine selection, which is why we're giving it the equivalent rating of a 10. Cleanliness-wise, this is quite a large lounge, so it is kind of hard to maintain, but there are staff that are very, very attentive, that are coming through every minute or so to make sure that everything is good, and certainly we've got no complaints from our end, so we're going to break this one at nine. In terms of comfort, there are so many different types of seating here. The only reason we've taken points off are because you can still tell it's a very busy lounge with the number of people, so we're giving it an 8 out of 10. On the amenities front, then this does have Wi-Fi, business centers, charging ports, shower rooms. The bathrooms even have every kind of toiletry you could ever need if you're between flights as well. So, because of the fact that they've gone that extra mile, even on the basics, then we're going to rate this one an 8. That gives us a grand total of 45 out of 50, which is the highest we have rated a lounge ever in this 8 months of travel. This is pretty exciting for a number of reasons. First of all, it's our first time going to this part of the world at all, so this is going to be awesome. The second thing is that this is the first long haul business class flight I've ever done, so I'm pumped. And the third thing is that this is our first time flying on an Airbus A380, which is the double decker plane. And we're going to be on the top deck. Here we go. Business class. seems like a similar but still different setup to what we had on our short haul flight from Ho Chi Minh. Things like the remote, the massive screen TV as well. You've also got... What is that? A little footrest. That's a footrest? It's a footrest. USB and an outlet just down here. Plenty of undersea storage as well. So I've got my bag there. An eye mask. Socks. And slippers. Way too small for me, but still, I appreciate the sentiment. One pillow. Go around. 
blanket and sheets all in here as well. In this little cubby down here, we've also got three bottle of water. These are the controls for the bed. It looks like you can have the footrest down, you can have the footrest up, you can tilt your chair, you can have it completely lay flat, and then when you want your table to eat, you just push here, and I think it pops out, yeah, just popped out the side. And then it curves around to you, okay, here you go. And then it flips out. Dang, this is high tech stuff here. hours on a plane. We are just about to land, probably in the next 20-ish minutes. Yep. It was a very comfortable flight, but unfortunately, for reasons unknown, we just couldn't quite get up to sleep. So, kind of running on fumes, but we'll do our best. This is so comfortable. You could do this all day. Like, it, this oh, is... Yeah, this is luxurious. And, like, there's so much space to start things. So much good care of you. This has been a wonderful first experience of small business class. Yeah, this is a huge upgrade compared to economy. Oh my god, yeah. It's been a fantastic experience. But now we're about to get into our new country, so that's super exciting. So if you haven't worked it out by now, we have officially landed in Sydney, Australia. We've just checked into our Airbnb and I think we're going to call it quits for the day because we are absolutely exhausted. However, we cannot wait to go out exploring tomorrow because neither of us have been to this part of the world. So we're super excited to spend the next few weeks here. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.